lights. Ah, oh, man, what a chaotic Formula One race this morning. I mean, seriously. Lewis Hamilton takes out Max Verstappen, then overcomes a 10-second penalty to take the lead and win. I mean, it can't get any more chaotic than that. Let's see what's going on in the NASCAR race today. Well, Eric Alvarola with the upset at New Hampshire. Who won? For Eric Almarola? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you heard me right. You read this title right. Eric Almarola, who has been sitting 27th, the 28th, 29th in points all year long, just won a NASCAR Cup Series race at New Hampshire. New Hampshire, not Daytona, not Talladega, New Hampshire. And it wasn't a fluke either. It was speed. He was fast. Top five speed. And he went up there, he drove his butt off, and he won at New Hampshire. I am not making this, I don't think I'm making this up. Someone in the comments, please confirm that I watched the actual NASCAR Cup Series race because I genuinely am in shock right now. I don't believe that Eric Almirola actually just drove up and beat the field today. Someone, please, please tell me, please. I'm I'm seriously in shock. Okay, um, we're going to go on the... The thing that this actually happened, this is a real life thing, and that Eric Almirola actually won at New Hampshire, redeeming himself for 2018. Remember, in 2018, he was leading. He led a lot of laps in that race. I don't remember what happened, but something stupid happened, and he lost the race. I don't know if it was a late race caution, a pit penalty. Something stupid happened, and he lost the race. This year, in one of his worst career seasons, and definitely his worst was Stuart Haas Racing, where he's running 25th or worse in points and he literally has weeks where his best run or not his best run but where his top speed is 26th place he has had weeks that bad in a Stuart Haas racing Ford Stuart Haas racing is one of the top teams in NASCAR Kevin Harvick has won a championship with them they've made the championship for years consecutive years with Harvick that all four cars have made the playoffs in the years past heck all four cars made the playoffs last year with Stuart Haas racing this year has been awful for Stuart Haas racing prior to today to today Zero wins as a team. Maybe three top fives. Okay, maybe outside of Kevin Harvick, three top fives. They've been awful this year. Absolutely awful. They haven't led laps. They haven't won a race. They have just been awful. Three of them are outside of the playoffs by a lot of points, so it looked like it was impossible for them to make it. Kevin Harvick's in by a good chunk. But then today happened. Kevin Harvick led over 60 laps today, which, you know, okay, Harvick's good at New Hampshire. He. Kevin Harvick, that, that's not shocking at all. Come on, let's be honest. But then Eric Almirola shows up, and he's in the top 10. And I'm like, okay, good for him. Good, solid day for him if he gets a top 10. Then he gets up into the top five. Then he gets up into the top three. Then he's challenging Ryan Blaney for the lead. Then he is leading the race. Not early, not middle, at the end of the race. And this is all... While there are threats of the race ending due to darkness, not, no, 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 not rain, not something stupid, I don't know what else, lightning, lightning or rain, not lightning or rain, darkness. The last time I can remember us having a threat of darkness was Jeff Gordon's final win in 2015. God, that was my favorite race of all time, by the way. Um... I got sidetracked there. The point being, New Hampshire does not have lights. Where there was a rain delay early in this race, which we will talk about later, but this kind of overthrows my rant that I was going to have earlier. But anyways, the point being, darkness was threatening the end of this race, so now we have different strategies. Almirola, Blaney, Keselowski, Christopher Bell, all the really good cars that are really fast, they pit for fresh tires and fuel because they can't make it to the end on fuel. And so some guys stay out. Matt Benedetto, Bubba Wallace, uh, William Byron. So either guys who already have a win this season and want some more playoff points or guys who are desperate and need a win to make the playoffs, they stay out. And, you know, I'm like, what if he could start? What if Matt Benedetto leads? He led for like 30, 20 to 30 laps there. And then nothing happens. No cautions to kind of save them. They run out of fuel. They kind of pit and stuff. Or Almirola and Keselowski chase him down. And in this prog process... Almirola got out ahead of Keselowski out of the pit cycle, but Keselowski passed him on speed, on short run speed. Keselowski's short run car was really good, but Almirola's long run car was incredible. And so Keselowski passes him. I'm like, oh man, I wanted to see a stupid winner, right? You know, just something stupid to happen. It's been such a weird day in motorsports. Let's add some more sparkles to it, right? And then Eric Almirola doesn't let him run away. 
Keselowski probably got a second away at most. Like Al Keselowski didn't run away. He did not. That short run speed did not launch him out to a four second advantage. Almirola in the next ten laps, he was back to the back bumper, and then he was side by side, and then he was leading. Well, he was ahead of Keselowski. Then Matt De Benedetto pitted, and I'm like, Eric Almirola is gonna win this in a breeze? What? No, it was not a breeze. It was not easy for Eric Almirola. Christopher Bell decided to just turn into. I don't know, Lewis Hamilton today, and freaking goes 300 miles an hour, and he closes the gap from like 6 seconds to 5 seconds to 4 seconds to 3 seconds to 2 seconds. He's a second and a half behind Eric Almirola. And then all of a sudden, Christopher Bell is within a second of Eric Almirola because the lap traffic isn't playing along because Austin Dillon knows that if Eric Almirola wins, Austin Dillon is out of the playoffs. Like, where did that come from? I forgot that Austin Dillon was in on points. And Austin Dillon, he was in by a lot of points. Over 100 points, probably, because of last week, Kurt Busch winning. And then Eric Almirola takes the lead, and it's only like six points. So he goes from being more than a race safe into the playoffs on points to being a stage away from being out of the playoffs. Or, yeah, he's being out of the playoffs, actually, completely. So Eric Almirola decides to go up, and then... He gets by Austin Dillon because he pushes him up the racetrack a little bit because he kind of had to or Bell would have gotten to him. And then Eric Almirola wins the race. And that's a conclusion of how Eric Almirola won a NASCAR Cup Series race in New Hampshire, ladies and gentlemen. That is the five-minute version of how Eric Almirola, the guy who has been 30th in points all year long, won a race on pure speed. Ah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anymore what anything is. Michael McDowell wins the Daytona 500. Eric Almirola wins at New Hampshire off pure, raw, fat speed after running 27th all year long. Who am I? What is NASCAR? Who is... No. Who is NASCAR? How is NASCAR? And why is NASCAR? Because Eric Almirola, driver to the number 10 who is a free agent after this year, I think. His ride is not guaranteed next year. Might have just won himself a race and a new contract. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know who I am. I don't know what is NASCAR. I don't know who is NASCAR or how is NASCAR. But Eric Almirola wins a chaotic, a weird... Honestly, that was one of the wackiest races I have ever seen in NASCAR, and I loved it. That is right. I loved this race, except for the first three laps. We do have to talk about that. The first three laps of this race were absolutely stupid, and that is not a compliment. That is an insult. That was the stupidest thing I have ever seen. Not the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I've seen stupider. But the first three laps of this race were stupid. I'm going to continue to use that word because that's what it was. NASCAR goes out for the pace laps at the scheduled start time, which is cool and all, you know, okay, start time, that's what you expected, you know, whatever. The track is still wet. You can see on TV, the track is still wet. You can see on the camera lenses, there are still raindrops. And by the time the green flag dropped, you could literally see the rain coming down onto the racetrack. The raindrops in the air. And they were still racing. And on lap three, turn one got wet enough. Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, Joe Gibbs is amazing at New Hampshire. They wipe out. They go and crash into turn one. Kyle Busch's car is destroyed. He can't continue on. Martin Truex Jr. has enough damage that impacts his day, and he's not able to recover to get a good finish. And Denny Hamlin spins around. Uh, Blaney, I think, kind of got involved, but Blaney wasn't affected by it. But the point being, NASCAR did not think there. The track was clearly wet. I could tell you from my couch that the track was wet and it was raining. But for some reason, NASCAR, who was at the track with a bunch of officials there in their pace car on pit road, could not tell that it was raining, could not tell that the track was wet. They had to wait until guys were crashing like it's the 2001 All-Star Race. Now, thankfully for you, the viewer, I'm not going to go into a 20-minute rant like I originally planned because, well, Eric Almirola decided to win and it put me in kind of a good mood and now I don't feel like ranting. Maybe that's for another day. So... In conclusion, that was awful by NASCAR. I don't know what they were doing there. That was extremely stupid. That might be a separate video, the, stupid, the stupidity of that call. Let's look at the race results. Um, uh, Eric Almirola won. He's in the playoffs now. I don't know what life is. 
Um, if you told me he would run top 10 today, I'd say, okay, good for him. If told me top five, I'd say that's far-fetched. If you told me he'd win and win on pure speed, I might have slapped you. Like, not like a mean slap, but like, oh, you're stupid. What are you thinking? Like, that kind of thing. But, um, man, if you bet on Eric Almirola to win today, you probably got a buttload of money. His odds had to have been incredible. But anyways, Eric Almirola's in the playoffs. It took a, a win at New Hampshire. Or they called the race like 10 laps early because of the darkness. But um, Eric Almirola won. He's in the playoffs. I don't know what else to say. He straight up won. Like, this is not a fluke. He was actually fast today. Like, he genuinely passed Penske cars. He passed Kevin Harvick, Hendrick cars. He passed everyone. Not every single car, but he passed anyone that was in his way. And he won an NASCAR Cup Series race at New Hampshire. Um, I don't know. I don't know. He's in the playoffs. That shakes up the playoff bubble. That messes everything up in the playoffs. I... <laughs> Second, I mean, I'm extremely happy for him, too. He seems like a really good guy. And, you know, he's had such a rough year. They've had such stupid and bad luck. And, you know, I'm I'm really happy for him. That's a great win for him personally. Obviously, that contract and stuff, wanting to get renewed. But as for the playoffs, oh, boy. Uh, that could be another rant about this system. But, it does, you know, the playoff system with the winning you're in, I don't like it personally. But it does make for a more exciting race. Like, if there wasn't a winner year in system, Eric Almirola's win today would have just been like a wow, surprising. But it it wouldn't have meant anything outside of he just won a race. I guess he's in the playoffs now, so that's cool too. But anyways, he won a race. I don't know how. I don't know what life is. Christopher Bell finished his second. He's been historically great at New Hampshire. Three Xfinity wins, including one yesterday um, at New Hampshire. Great run for him. One of his best runs of the season, if you ask me, other than the, the Daytona Road Course and Road America. Uh absolutely great run today for him uh he was in the top five most of the day or yeah it, he finished second i'm at a loss for words overall so sorry if i don't say something today i'm genuinely shocked right now third place brad keselowski really good run for him today remember last year dominated this race ends up with a third place finish fourth place joey logano uh he was actually involved in that lap three kind of crap fest and he had some damage and once they lift, once the red flag was out, he decided one of his crew members decided to lift the hood flap and uh, fix something, and they got a penalty. And that penalty was two laps on pit road. You're gonna go two laps down. So Joey Logano all of a sudden is two laps down, and he rallies from two laps down to fourth. That makes me think, if Joey Logano like. If Joey Logano didn't start the day off two laps down and he just went on raw speed, how badly would he have whipped the field today? Because, oh my gosh, he was two laps down and he got up to fourth. That's incredible. Fifth place, Ryan Blaney. Team Penske's best performance overall in one race, in my opinion. Really good day for them. Blaney won a stage. Um, led a lot of laps. I mean, just a really good day for Team Penske. Sixth place, Kevin Harvick. As I said, Stuart Haas' racing has been awful this year. He's been the highlight for them. But shockingly Kevin Harvick was not the first winner for SHR in 2021 that belongs to Eric Almarola Kevin Harvick man like literally Kevin Harvick has been the best for SHR for years and all of a sudden he's not the when the guy winning the first race of the year for him in July like it's July they haven't won a race yet and it's not Kevin Harvick winning the first race of the year for them I'm not concerned for Harvick he's been leading laps more recently he's been getting some top fives top tens he's been consistent so it's not like it's Kevin Harvick career over or something but good run for him he looked really good today seventh place Kyle Larson then good for him I guess eighth place he might have taken the points lead after today actually maybe maybe not i don't know eighth place ross chastain good good day for him ninth place alex bowman tenth place denny hamlin denny hamlin he was in the top five for a good chunk of the race but then he had a speeding penalty i th it was speeding penalty or loose wheel one of those he ends up 10th 11th matt de benedetto gambled there at the end tried to lead and win the race he did lead some laps but he ends up 11th 12th place, Martin Truex Jr. Actually, pretty solid recovery after, you know, sliding into the wall in turn one because NASCAR doesn't know what a wet racetrack is. Uh, yeah, cool. 13th, Tyler Reddick was actually in the top three for a bit, was contending with Chase Elliott and Christopher Bell for a top three position early in this race. Looked really, really good. Ends up 13th. 14th, Cole Custer. 
We had three SHR cars in the top 15 today. One of them won. And the one that won isn't Kevin Harvick. I don't know anymore. 15th, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. 16th, Kurt Busch. My hair is bothering me. Stop it, hair. 16th, the Kurt Busch. Cool. Good for him. He led some laps early. 17th, Austin Dillon. He was trying so hard to not let, to not let Eric Almirola pass him and to let Christopher Bell catch up. Well, Austin Dillon failed, and he's out of the playoffs now after he's been having such a good season. 18th, Chase Elliott. Uh, he was in the top 10 and top 5, and then they had a bad pit stop, and that kind of screwed them. 18th. 19th, Eric Jones. 20th, Daniel Suarez. 21st, William Byron. Took a gamble there at the end. Ends up 21st. 22nd, Ryan Priest. 23rd, Corey LaJoy. 24th, Ryan Newman. Had a nice little rivalry with Quinn Hauf today. That was very random and unexpected, and I kind of loved it. That's just the rivalry you don't expect, but I, I didn't realize I needed that one. Quinn Howe versus Ryan Newman. I really hope this turns into a saga. 25th, Michael McDowell. 26th, Bubba Wallace. 27th, Chase Briscoe, the worst SHR car. Um, yeah. I don't know what else to say on SHR. I don't know anything anymore. 28th, Justin Haley. 29th, Chris Buescher. 30th, BJ McLeod. Get live from McLeod. 31st, Cody Ware. 32nd. Anthony Alfredo, 33rd, Garrett Smithley, 34th, Josh Balicki, 35th, Quinn Hauf, 36th, James Davison, 37th, Kyle Busch was involved in a lap on lap number three because NASCAR doesn't know what a wet racetrack is. And Kyle Busch would not lay into NASCAR. Like, usually in that situation, Kyle Busch would be pissed. He'd be saying something to the media, being like, you suck. But he's like, I won't take the fine for it. I can't say that because it's actions detrimental to stock car racing. And uh, so he didn't say anything, but he did bump the pace car a good bit, gave the pace car some damage. But, um, um, yeah, I, I, what did I just watch? If you watched that race, please confirm with me in the comments that that actually happened, that Eric Almarola, who is like 27th in points, actually won a NASCAR Cup Series race at New Hampshire on pure speed. After being awful to all of this year. I cannot believe that just happened. The playoff bubble has not been burst. It has been ripped apart, shredded, kicked into Canada, and frozen in ice, broken back up, blended into a smoothie, and shipped over to England. That's what's happened to the playoff, uh, the playoff list, the playoff grid thingy. I don't know what just happened. Well, actually, I do. Eric Almirola won a race, and he got himself into the playoffs. He might have just knocked out Austin Dillon out of the playoffs or Tyler Reddick, but RCR looked like they had a great chance of getting both their cars in. Well, Eric Almirola has different plans. That might have been the best race of the year. I'm not just saying that because Eric Almirola won. The most boring winner ever could have won that. That could have been a Joey Logano, like a guy we see win every week. Joey Logano, Martin Truex Jr., Kyle Busch, Kyle Larson, Kevin Harvick. I don't care. Any driver in the field today could have won that race. That was an incredible race. The racing was incredible, side by side, guys going in different lines, trying to diamond the corner, cross people over, run people up the track. It was a thrilling race. The strategy at the end, trying to make it to the dark, thrilling, extremely fun. The only fun I didn't have during this race was the first three laps when I was screaming at the TV, it is raining, it is raining, why are we racing in the rain? They are going to crash. Other than that, I love this race. This race gets a perfect 10 out of 10 with a Smithfield bacon stamp on top of it. That was an incredible race, arguably the race of the year. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Today in motorsports was one of the wackiest days in motorsports I've experienced as a fan. Formula One, the championship leader, gets wrecked by his rival, who goes on to win after a 10-second penalty. That was crazy, and I thought my day was done with chaos after that. I thought I could sit back during this NASCAR race, relax, watch a normal race, but no. NASCAR had to give me an incredible race. And you see what happens when you don't put PJ1 on every track NASCAR? That was without PJ1, and that was an incredible race, NASCAR. And then Eric Almirola won and made today even weirder and wackier and crazier. Oh my. Guys, I'm going to need to rethink everything right now. 
I don't know what's going to happen in the playoffs at this rate. Eric Almirola Championship. Have a great rest of your night.